Hi everyone, my name is Sean Sinclair and I am a fourth year PhD student at Cornell in the Operations Research Department. Today I'll be talking about our paper on sequential fare allocation, achieving the optimal NV efficiency trade-off curve. This paper is joint with my two advisors, Sid Banerjee and Christina Yu, who are both also at Cornell in the Operations Research Department. Our paper is motivated by a partnership that we had established through the Food Bank of the Southern Tier. This is our local food bank and serves about 21,000 people per week across the six counties in the Southern Tier of New York, including Tompkins County, which is the one where Ithaca or Cornell is located in. We were primarily motivated by one of their major distribution methods, which is their food, mobile food pantry program. And at a high level, the way that the program works is by loading up a truck at the start of the day, visiting various drop-off locations across different communities, and distributing per-person allocations at each of these drop-off locations. And to put the scale of the mobile food pantry into context, they distributed about 5 million pounds of food with their mobile food pantry last year. Without spending too much time immediately describing kind of the mathematical formulation of the model, I want to give a brief description of the high level idea. Again, we consider these allocation problems through their mobile food pantry program. And this starts with a truck at the top that's loaded up with a fixed amount of resources and knowledge of a fixed schedule of different distribution locations that they will visit throughout the day. Throughout the day, the truck visits the various drop-off locations, deciding allocations per individual at each of these locations before proceeding to the next. And concretely, what that means is that the allocations are made online, so round by round, and the algorithm is only able to use distributional knowledge of the demands for future locations because that information is only revealed sequentially. And so you can think of this problem as a budgeted online sequential allocation problem. And lastly, the high level goals of the food bank are twofold. First, they want to minimize waste, which is just to ensure that they give out as much of the resources that the truck is loaded up with as possible. The second property is envy or efficiency, which is just trying to ensure equity and care across the different locations and individuals as well. And to give the punchline of the paper, we show this result that in these online stochastic multiple resource allocation problems, that there is a fundamental trade-off between these two notions of envy and efficiency. And this trade-off is realizable by a simple allocation scheme that's obtained by maximizing what's called the national social welfare. And at the top here, we have the three different axes, which will throw, show the structure of the presentation. Well, we will first start off with a description of the online stochastic model, then define envy and efficiency in yellow, and then define what national social welfare is in the kind of greenish blue at the top left, give the main results and some intuition behind it. So here we have a cartoon style picture of the model setup, where the background is taken to be a screenshot of Ithaca, New York, for those of you who've been here before. And so on the left-hand side, we have a truck that's loaded up with a fixed amount B of the starting resources. The truck then travels to the first distribution location and observes a vector N1 theta, where theta corresponds to an individual's type. This type could be thought of as encompassing things like whether they are vegetarian, uh, the family size, and so on. And so, for example, the food truck could visit this first location, observe three vegetarian individuals, a vegetarian family of size four, uh, whatever family of size six, and so on. And so this would dictate this vector n1 theta for the number of individuals of each type which is observed. Afterwards, uh, the mobile food pantry decides a per person or type allocation x1 theta for each of the different resources. And this could be something like four cans of soup for the individual vegetarian, soup, rice, and other produce for the family of size four, and so on. Important to note is that this allocation is a per person or type allocation. And so the total amount of resources that are used in this round will be the product of what's shown on the top, which is the allocation for the type, multiplied by what's shown at the bottom, which is the number of individuals for that round of that type. This then completes the first round. The mobile food pantry then goes to the second distribution location for the second round, observes this vector n2 theta of the number of individuals of the different type, and then again decides a per person allocation x2 theta. This then repeats to the third round where you observe n3 theta for the number of individuals of this type and decide per person allocations x3 theta. And lastly, 
at kind of the end of the day, we measure the allocations based off of a utility function, u of x theta, which characterizes for each type theta, the utility that they would receive for the allocation x that is given to them. And this utility could be thought of as preferences for the different resources or other model of individual utilities like homothetic preferences as well. Now that we've kind of finished this cartoon example, we can give the mathematical formulation. Again, the truck starts off with a fixed amount b of the k different resources. So b is the starting resources and it's a vector of length k. Then in each round t, you observe this vector and t theta drawn from a known distribution ft of the number of individuals in that specific round t of the different type theta. The allocation algorithm then decides a per person allocation xt theta of each of the k different resources and individuals of type theta receive a utility u of x theta for the allocation that they receive. And lastly, the total resources that are exhausted in this specific round is a sum over types of the number of individuals of that type multiplied with the allocation that they were given. With this model now defined, the key question is, what are the desiderata to define what a fair allocation is? And this moves us on into the next section or color of defining what a fair and efficient allocation is in this setting. And the definition of fairness that we consider in our model dates back to social choice discussions that were established by philosophers and then formalized later in the 70s by economists like Hal Varian. And the definition of a fair allocation presents these desiderata for a given allocation x t theta to be fair if it satisfies these three definitions. We'll start with the one on the bottom, which is efficient. And this just says that the allocation algorithm starts off with a fixed amount b of resources. And so all of the allocations given out by the algorithm, which is the sum over rounds and types of the number times the allocation given, should be equal to the starting resources. And this makes sense intuitively because if the allocation algorithm has some excess left over, it could have given that to some individual and increased their utility um, for having that extra resources given out. The second property is proportional. And for this property, a uh, kind of baseline solution that you could do is take the entire budget, fixed starting resources B, and divide it equally among all of the arrivals of the different types. And this property says that the utility that individuals receive for the allocation has to be at least as good as this kind of naive equal allocation baseline as well. And the first property is envy freeness, which just says that individuals prefer the allocation that they were given to the allocation that is given to anybody else. So these three natural kind of fairness desiderata are kind of our gold standard for what we try and want to achieve for the allocation algorithms that we have. But with this, we're just kind of writing down a definition. And so the next step is to try and ask, how can we even find what a fair allocation is? And what's nice about the fairness definition that we consider here is that while it might seem unintuitive initially on how to find one, we can find a fair allocation by maximizing the celebrated national social welfare, which is written here by maximizing the product of the utilities subject to this allocation constraint, which just ensures that we're not giving out more resources than we have being the fixed uh, starting resources B. And while this might not look super easy to optimize, we can take the logarithm where the exponent comes down and the U is replaced by the logarithm in order to get what is called the Eisenberg Gale program. And under some regularity conditions on the utility functions for different individuals, this can be represented as a concave program. And we take the solution to this optimization problem as the kind of quote unquote gold standard for what we want to achieve in the online setting because the solution to this optimization problem satisfies the three fairness definitions and the freeness proportional and efficient that we presented earlier. However, this optimization problem here is strictly offline because it depends on these NT thetas, which the decision maker only observes round by round. And so a major kind of roadblock that you have for this model is that it turns out that no allocation algorithm can exactly achieve this fair solution or even exactly achieve those three fairness properties of efficiency, proportional, and envy freeness in this online stochastic model. And with this, you have to turn to defining what an approximate notion of envy and efficiency is that you wanna consider in this online model. And this leads us to the definitions that we had. And to be quite frank, 
we spent a lot of time working with the food bank and had endless debates and discussion on how and what we wanted to formalize for the different objectives that the food bank cares about in this online setting. But in the end, we were able to converge on these two definitions that we have here. For both of them, we will denote X alg as the allocations that are made by the algorithm and X opt as the gold standard fair solution in hindsight, which is the one that optimizes the Eisenberg Gale program that we just saw based off of the full vector of arrivals NT theta in hindsight. The second property here is efficiency, which just measures the leftover resources that the allocation algorithm has. So you start off with the resources given by B and you subtract off the resources that are given out by the allocation algorithm. And that metric is defined to be efficiency. The first property is counterfactual NB, which looks at the maximum difference in utilities for the allocations made by the algorithm against the gold standard fair solution uh, X opt in hindsight. And what's nice about this metric is that by getting a counterfactual NV of zero, you are actually able to exactly achieve those three fairness properties or those three fairness desiderata that we discussed before. And so now that we've had these approximate notions of NV and efficiency, we're able to loop back to the main result of the paper where we were able to show that in these online stochastic resource allocation problems, that there is a fundamental trade-off between NV efficiency and this trade-off is realizable by a simple guardrail allocation scheme that's obtained by maximizing national social welfare. And to be a little bit more mathematical, you can represent the three results that we show in the paper by this plot that you see on the left-hand side, where the x-axis at the bottom is counterfactual NV and the y-axis is efficiency. The first result is a statistical uncertainty result, which says that any online algorithm must suffer counterfactual NV larger than one over square root of T due to the uncertainty into the arrivals. And this is observed with this vertical line with the red region shaded to the left here, which says that a counterfactual NV of one over square root of T or smaller is not achievable in the online setting. The second property is the NV efficiency trade-off, which says that any algorithm suffers a product of NV and efficiency larger than a constant which is represented by the red region below the curve at the bottom. And intuitively, this says that any algorithm cannot simultaneously achieve low efficiency and also low NV. The third result is a positive one, which is good for us, and is the green region in the top right, which says that there's a simple algorithm called guarded hope, parameterized by a value LT, that's able to achieve any given trade-off point along these curves. So to give a little bit of intuition behind how the algorithm works, uh, we're gonna start off with a naive solution, which generates a lower guardrail solution around the gold standard X opt. So we know that X opt solves this Eisenberg Gale program that depends on the full vector NT theta. So first predict those values to obtain optimistic estimates by its mean plus an appropriately chosen confidence term. Once you have those estimates, take those values and plug them into the Eisenberg-Gale program, where here we have the Eisenberg-Gale program written again, where the unknown NT theta is replaced with these optimistic estimates. Solve this optimization problem and get the solution X lower T theta. You're able to show that allocating this lower threshold allocation or X lower is feasible, which means you don't run out of budget giving it out, and it satisfies a counterfactual NV bound of one over square root of T. We are also able to show that allocating this solution gives you an efficiency bound of square root of t as well, which going back to the trade-off curves that we had represented pictorially before, is just one point along the cusp of this specific trade-off curve. But once we develop these lower bounds, the natural next question was, how could we modify the algorithm to achieve all of these other points along the trade-off curve as well? And so for this, once you have this lower threshold allocation again, we use guardrails to get an upper threshold allocation, where instead of solving Eisenberg Gale with optimistic estimates of the future arrivals, we solve it with pessimistic estimates of the future arrivals, where given our chosen parameter LT, if you increase LT, then you increase the amount of pessimism that you're plugging into the solution of the Eisenberg Gale. Solve this optimization problem and get what's called the upper threshold allocation. Now, the algorithm is quite simple given these lower and upper threshold allocations, where at every round, if you have sufficient budget to allocate the lower threshold to an optimistic estimate of the future demand, 
then the algorithm is safe and you're able to allocate this upper threshold now because you know with high probability you will not run out of budget in the future. And if this inequality is not satisfied, then you allocate the lower threshold. Again, you're able to say that with high probability, the algorithm does not run out of budget, which means it always allocates the upper and the lower threshold allocations. And by the kind of construction of these allocations, you're able to get a counterfactual NV bound that scales as LT. The next part is showing the efficiency bound being one over LT, which took a little bit more work. For this, you have to take the problem and relate it to an online stochastic packing problem where we have these guardrails on the allocations that we give out. And we end up analyzing a switching time, which is a high probability time where the algorithm switches to allocating the upper threshold. And the proof of this result takes inspiration from the lower bounds. And so just to kind of summarize the major contributions in the paper is we show that in these online stochastic resource allocation problems, that there is a fundamental trade-off between NV and efficiency, which is realized by this simple pectoral diagram that we have at the bottom. You can also look in the paper to see a case study using data from the local food bank of the Southern Tier, which is to analyze the experimental results of the different algorithms for the different choice of the parameters LT as well. We also have some forthcoming work that I would be more than happy to talk about at Sigmetrics in person, where we are able to extend the model of the utility functions to also include complementarities like Leontief utilities and those in the extant literature like Cobb-Douglas utilities. We also considered the model where the resources perish over time according to stochastic lifetime distributions and showed that a simple modification of the algorithm and under natural assumptions on the perishing process that this exact same NV efficiency trade-off curve uh, uh, also applies. And lastly, more broadly, we've been working on developing simulators for models and operations management in order to understand these multi-criteria decision making. So we've been working on developing models on supply chain optimization, vaccine allocation, inventory control, queuing networks, resource allocation, and facility location problems. And so thank you so much for watching my presentation. My email is listed here, so please reach out for any more questions. And the full paper is also available on archive. Thank you so much.